Hello everyone, Mark Major here, and this is the Action Figure Atorium. I'm a real big toy collector as well as a studio owner here in Southeast Portland. And one of the things that I am exploring as far as action figures and toys goes are these uh, snap kits, such as the ones um, you can get for making Gundam figures. And today I'm going to be going through the building of one of these. It is this guy known as the Deep Sea Ripper from a company called 57, or actually number 57. I'm not sure exactly which one they prefer, but um, it is 57 somewhere in the title there. This is a 124th scale shark man. There he is with all of his accoutrements, and you can see he's got a hammerhead buddy with him there. And they give you both heads with this thing. You can build um, one or the other if you like and uh, I'm gonna go through this I'm gonna go through the pros and cons of building this and give you a little bit of insight as to the difficulty that you may experience with this kit or this type of kit and uh, then we're also gonna just do kind of a review and take a look at the finished products everybody strap on the leather hold on tight So I'm going to uh, watch this in the corner screen here as we look at um, several videos I have snapped of the process of building this together with some commentary. I'm going to keep it brief where it needs to be brief and if there's something that needs to be said, well, we're going to come out and say it. So with this kit, this Deep Sea Ripper as he's known, um, this is an ages 15 and above. And um, this kit and others by this company or any of these like uh, Gundam kits, these snap kits that come out, um, if you are a parent and you buy one of these for your child, if your kid has one of these, I recommend that you take uh, an evening or maybe over the course of two evenings, because it took me two days to build this thing and I'm a 51 year old man. Um, you should actually make the activity a group activity and sit down and do it with your kid. And um, it takes patience. It takes patience and it also takes focus. And kids kind of need a little guiding of the patience and focus to get this done. Um, also, there's a few delicate parts in there that could go south. So what do you need for this um, as far as tools go? Well. Uh, I would say you definitely gonna need some little tin snips once in a while. I mean, you can wiggle most of the pieces off the sprue, as they're called, off the tree, but there's a few that it helps if it clips. Um, another thing that you should have is an emery board to just file down all the little rough edges that come out of it. Now, I have to say that I am a lazy person and I didn't even bother to walk a few feet to grab my emery board. I just used the little file on my fingernail clipper and it got me to the finish line, which is okay. Um, should you have any kind of pliers for this, because it's you got to snap it together and sometimes they're tight, I'm going to say no, do not do pliers because you're probably going to end up breaking these pieces, although there was a uh, point in which I did have to use the needle nose to get a little thing in and get it together, and I did have to force an occasional little thing by pressing down on it. Um, you're also going to need probably some scissors to cut into the packaging, and um, you shouldn't use glue on these. I, I have to stress that that these are something that you may end up taking apart later. You definitely don't want to glue it. However, on this particular guy, there's a few pieces that just would not stay clipped on. They would they every time I picked it up, they fell off. And so I recommend having a little bit of this like white glue, tacky glue, um, stuff you can get at the dollar store. Uh, this is also good if you have action figures with loose joints to kind of just sort of put a little goop in there to get them kind of, you know, not so, um, you know, not so floppy. And so I did use this and I have to say that you could even go to a stronger glue for this. Now, one other thing that you might consider for this, I don't know how your eyes are, but I actually got this magnifying glass. Look at that light. That's amazing, isn't it? I had this and I use it on the instructions many times to get a, a better view of, uh, of the name of the parts as well as to see what the parts look like to try and identify it in my hand and make sure I had it going the right way. It was a bit confusing sometimes and so the magnifying glass helped. Um, one other thing I want to say is that in building this, um, the parts that are kind of small and loose and sometimes fell off, at one point I 
uh, dropped the, the shark and some of the pieces like exploded all over the room. And I went, uh, you know, looking for them. I took like an hour and a half. I found five out of the six little pieces that blew apart. I'm still missing one. So if you're building this, right, get kind of a safe space where something could bounce off the table and fall on the floor and you can find it easy. Don't go out and build this in your barn. So should we uh, flip over to, um, to the vid? Here we go. So for those of you that missed, this is the, uh, this is the box. And um, this is, uh, it's an import. This is all sort of crazy. I believe it's some sort of Japanese kanji. Um, the instructions for this, they're all just like numbers and they show you a part that goes together. Occasionally there'll be like a little footnote in, um, I'm assuming it's Japanese. Uh, really wish there was a little bit of English in there. Um, so let's move on to the next video. So when you open the box and this thing, everything comes in these nice sort of little baggies like this, which is why you need the scissors for this. Um, it comes with three shark heads, one with open mouth, closed mouth, and a hammer head. And then there's also the exact same heads, but they're white. Now, what are the white heads for? I don't know. Are they to paint it? They're not glow in the dark. Maybe they're to paint it. Um, this is another little part of kind of a little diorama thing that he goes with. And you can see that they're, um, they come the pieces come on these trees that are different colored. That means you don't need to paint this thing. You can put it together and you can use all the, the colored pieces to make it look kind of done. So like a lot of model kits like cars, when you, after you build them, you got to paint them, um, that kind of thing. Uh, there's some more parts. Um, there's also, I have to point out, there is a uh, instruction manual that comes with this thing. And then there was a separate like two page instructions that we'll get to at the end and uh, it's just interesting that they sort of uh, shoehorned in these extra instructions, but they were for specifically just the uh, the weapon. So you can see it's got a cool. There's white. There's orange. There's blue. This is this is a good piece. This is a real good piece. And I paid 16 bucks new for it. Um, you look on eBay, they're they're quite expensive for these um, these figures. But I, I found a, a toy store called. Uh, uh, Gun damn it, I think it was called. Um, and there's the instruction manual. So the first thing uh, is you want to uh, go through and just take scissors and break everything out and uh, arrange all your parts there. Um, all those little trees are numbered, uh, lettered and numbered. So there's like E1, E2, E3, and they kind of make sense. Now you're going to grab different pieces at different times. So you're not going to just do the A section and then the B section and then the C section. There's the uh, extra manual that comes with it. You're going to pull from little pieces all the time. You're going to pull from the A's and the B's and the E's and you're going to, to, to get this thing together. Um, and that's, that's sort of part of it. All right, let's skip on. So here's the first thing that you kind of build with this thing. It's sort of the tail and the sort of uh, trunk of it. Now there's a piece that my thumb is covering there. That piece falls off all the time. It continued to fall off and it just blew across the room when I dropped it. That's a piece that I would put a little bit of tacky glue on and, uh, and glue it on. Um, I would do that. I would do that in this age. And, um, and the, it's cool how this, um, I mean, if you build this thing it, and you, you know, you'll see kind of how action figure joints work. And if you're a person who wants to one day create your own action figures, design them in, in like a 3D sculpt, uh, building a kit like this will definitely help your intuition on how things go together. So you can see me struggling, trying to put this thing, uh, put the next piece into it here. Um, and then, uh, then there's kind of this sort of the bulk of it, sort of the, uh, this is the sort of upper torso. It's got the fin on the top and this connects to the, um, to the tail piece there. And uh, here I am just putting on the last little, uh, the sides. This thing kind of reminded me of the uh, Shark Decons. That was a, uh, a Transformers toy that, that was first um, introduced in that Transformers movie that came out in 1986. So if you like Shark Decons, you might think about picking, uh, picking one of these guys up. So at this point, you've kind of have the majority of the thing built at this point, you really only need the arms and the legs, to be honest. 
the head slips on, no, no problem. So there I am putting that goddamn piece on again. And uh, man, talk about a, uh, a frustrating, frustrating thing there. But that's sort of what just the body looks like when you get it all together. Now there's lots of little fans on this. Um, there's like little, uh, you know, turbo jets everywhere. They're, they're on the feet, they're on the soles of the feet, they're, they're on the weapons. It's, it's, a, it's a cool piece. So when you put this thing together, um, there's all these little pieces that somehow uh, snap in that actually, um, they're just there for decoration. That piece that I'm adding there was kind of difficult to figure out. Um, also, I want to tell you guys that at one point there was, um, and all this like fit together really well, but there was one piece that would not go together. I had to take a little pin and heat it up and just make the hole a little bit bigger for the, uh, for the other piece to snap into it. And uh, other than that, this thing all essentially worked. There was nothing too difficult. The majority of it went together quite easy. Uh, but it, if you have to take it apart, it's actually kind of difficult. They, uh, they do not want to unsnap. So here we have sort of the, uh, the finished main part with all the decorations on it. And, uh, and you can see that it's, it's prime for the next part, uh, which is going to be, um, I, here I skip the, uh, the next thing in the instructions was to make the thrusters that go uh, on his shoulders. I skipped those to do the, um, do the legs first. Here I am uh, building uh, the legs and the arms. Here I am building the arms. The arms are, uh, are essentially just kind of these, um, uh, they're, they're like little torpedo things. Um, let me see if I can scroll to where, uh, where it makes sense. So you can see how, um, just slightly out of out of the camera on this. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, there we go. So there's like what the arms look like now. These things here, uh, these um, uh, the the little claws things. Those fall off all the time. If you pick it up, they just drop off. That's what I put a little bit of glue onto. And uh, and if you if you touch them at all, they're supposed to like kind of open up as little claws. If you touch them at all they fall apart. And that is really kind of where I'm going to deduct the most points on this thing are those pieces. But there it is with the, uh, with the, the arms on it. It looks pretty cool, right? It's not bad. Also, I want to say at 124th scale, um, 124th scale to what? To a human? Is this thing supposed to be human, 124th human size, or is it supposed to be 124th uh, great white sh shark. I don't know. Um, there's the legs. They're just kind of these turbo jets and the feet are separate and there's just sort of a, they're kind of chicken legs and um, there's like one piece that connects them. They're kind of cool looking in my opinion. Underneath it's got like another little turbo jet and you can see the little turbo jet on the front of them. There's turbo jets on everything on this. I think it's, it's pretty cool for uh, an underwater theme. And here are the uh, thrusters. These actually go essentially on the back. There's a little piece on the back with little nubs on it. And these are cool. They, they rock and rotate and they actually um, will um, see how they, uh, they hinge open, but they'll actually, actually close like that. And they could be a weapon. Um, those little pieces open up. That's cool. Uh, you see that this thing is actually pretty, pretty complicated. It's not just like building a car and it sits there. It actually is like an action figure with a lot of articulation. Now this thing, I don't know why the hell this is included with it. Um, this is kind of like a little uh, base that he sits in, and it's got like a little, um, kind of like a submarine door in it, and uh, and it's was actually somewhat confusing to build. And this, obviously, because it's a bunch of plastic and big plastic compared to the other pieces, this uh, increases the cost of the model. And I wish that they had like lower the cost and left this out. You do not need this for anything. It is stupid. The guy fits in it and he looks dumb in it, but um, it's just, you know, it's just not big enough for what it should be, but, but that's kind of what it is. And uh, it's just sort of three pieces, you know, that go together, make a back, a top and the floor. And then there's a couple of weird turbo jet fan things on the top of it. Totally, totally unnecessary. So we're going to combine at this point, we're going to put the legs on it and uh, we're going to um, also put a head on it. I think at this point, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here. 
Uh, not the greatest vid making yet. Um, I promise greatness in the next one. So here it is with the thrusters on, the legs on it, the hands, uh, the arms on it, the head on it. And uh, this is your shark guy. This is, uh, this is what the dude looks like. So one of these little pieces in the hands there, the little the claws, I'm still missing it. It blew across the room. I don't know where it is. I've looked for an hour. Don't know. Okay, now this thing. This is a separate instruction manual. And this is for building the weapons. There's like a double harpoon gun. There is a, um, that's that. There is a, a torpedo gun. And the torpedo gun actually comes apart in, in, into two parts. You can actually take the back part out and it actually has some kind of an ammo in it. And then there's this thing. Now this is actually kind of interesting. So it's three pieces, right? It's, uh, it's an old school World War II mine. There's a middle part in the center and then the two sides go to it. It makes a sphere but they give you this little kind of bendy wire that connects the two pieces to the stand so that it looks like it's a mine that's kind of floating under underwater. And um, not sure what is necessary for this to go with your shark guy, but they threw it in and I built it and it's, you know, if I can focus it up there, you can get an idea of what this thing, this thing is. This might be cool with some other figures. All right, let's keep going. So there he is on the, uh, on the spinner there, right? And this is in uh, what I would call his like shark mode. What I did is, is the, uh, the legs actually will fold up into itself. And then there's a couple little pieces that's not, not shown in the instructions, by the way, but a couple of pieces that clip on the knees that, um, that go underneath, underneath it so that it stands level. And if you don't put those on, uh, this thing does not work. Okay, so let's move on some more. Here he is with the hammer head, all right? Let's swap the heads out. Let's put the torpedo thing. Uh, the gun kind of fits in the, where, the, uh, where the little claws go. Um, and same thing with the, the, tor uh, the harpoon gun kind of fits there, but I'll be perfectly honest. The minute you touch them, they fall apart. They just fall off. I put a little bit of glue on them. I don't want to permanently glue it on there, but I just use that tacky glue to keep it on. And uh, you can see that the, the little thrusters on it is, um, is, I got them sort of cocked open, but you can make it all like a tube if you want. Overall, I really like the colors they chose with the, the blue, the light blue, and the orange, and the dark blue, and the gray. It looks pretty cool on this guy. I, I'm wondering if you, um, if you put this guy underwater, if you'd get an even sort of cooler effect for this guy. Maybe I, I take him down to, um, over to like the, the river down a couple blocks from me here and throw my GoPro in the water and get some underwater shots of this guy or maybe have him coming out of the water. I think this guy could go places, but, uh, but the pieces fall off a lot of these things. So there may be some, maybe some hardcore gluing going on. And, um, and that is it for, uh, for how you build this thing. And um, I do have, check it out, there we go, we're still live in the studio. Here he is with the shark head back on, jaws open, all the stuff on him, and he's in his little, uh, he's in his little cage thing. In fact, I think I can, uh, I can walk over and I can, I think I can rock out a little bit there so you can see it. Yeah, there we go. So uh, there he is with his little uh, uh, dummy mine on him. I think that's kind of cool. The little claws on the feet move too, and they, they're pretty good at, at, um, at staying on. Um, one of the things that I'd like to, uh, to mention about this is that um, once I finished building it, right, I, uh, I was left over with, um, with just all these, these extra um, uh, pieces on the trees, right? And uh, there's a couple, couple left over here. A couple little dogs. There's a bunch left on this. There's a, a couple on this. There's a lot left over on this one. There's some pieces left over on this one. There's, there's one I dropped. There's uh, the, look. So I got all. There's a bunch of left over. They're not in the instruction manual. I, I don't. I don't know where these, I don't know where these go. I don't know what these do. Do these go on that little diorama thing, his little base he sits in? Um, no idea. No idea. And um, there's nothing even in Japanese that I could look at. So a little confused onto that. I guess once I start exploring 
those pieces and seeing what they fit onto and, and what they work. But they don't go on the shark, that's for sure. Now, the only thing I want to say is um, if you are the type of person who likes to uh, paint toys and if you're a person who builds model kits and you like to paint them, if you like doing these snap kits, these Gundam kits, um, what I recommend is, um, here, I'm going to grab a, uh, a Gundam that I painted, right? Mm -hmm. So um, this guy, um, here, I'll throw him, I'll throw him in the, uh, next to this dude. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, so this Gundam was a, uh, a, a Gundam kit, and I ended up uh, painting him, the spray painting him with this um, Krylon uh, tempered metal series. Uh, it was the iron one because I wanted to make him look kind of like a rusty dude. And what I found was that if you paint the the pieces when they're apart, uh, it's difficult to snap them back together because the little tiny pegs, they get a little bit of paint on them. They do not go in the holes, right? So one of the things with the Gundam guy would have been better is if I had just taken a couple pieces off that I didn't want painted, like the one the pieces you're seeing there that are red or the face, take those off, and then paint it when it's built, right? Uh, would have worked much better for that guy. That guy was really difficult after he'd been painted to get back together. Um, it's not going to work for the shark, though. The shark, you would want to paint all the different individual pieces. So what I would say is when they're still... If you want to paint these things, if you want to customize them, um, while it's still in their little trees, that's when you should do it, right? And then try and build it afterwards and maybe have a little bit of paint thinner on hand to use on the pegs so that they will go together. But paint it um, before you build it on the tree with this guy. Pick your colors, right? Take the orange things, make them this. Take the light blue things, make them this. And I think you're going to have a better time with it. Um, for this guy, because I've already built him, it's really not going to go, uh, it's not going to come apart and then go back together again. Um, anytime you do that with these snap kits, the, the joints never, ever, ever really work the same anymore. And you end up just adding some of that tacky glue to keep them from being all loose. In fact, this Gundam was built and I took him apart so I could spray paint him and he went back together and it's terrible now. He's all loosey-goosey. I kind of learned a mistake on that. Um, but if you, um, if you do it beforehand, uh, you know, with the spray paint or an airbrush, you're going to have great results. If you do it, hand paint it with a brush, I think on these little guys, I think it's going to look sloppy. Um, I'm going to definitely probably paint this guy, but I'm going to be real selective as I, what I paint. I think what really needs to be painted on him is, is all these, um, these, uh, uh, sort of hydro turbo things like here right and he's got one um you know they're uh they're here and he's got them on the bottom of his there see everything falls apart on this bottom of his feet and uh you know they're they're back here and uh there and uh and he's got some there and, uh, you know, on the knees, etc. So uh, those things really need a little bit of paint detail to make them look cool. That's definitely something that I would recommend that you do. And that's what I'm going to try and do. And so maybe, maybe we can get this guy to look totally badass. And also with those extra shark heads, maybe do something with those too. So thank you to everybody who made it this far 23 and change minutes in the video and as always folks remember to stay charged